So this is the iPhone 16 Pro in the white titanium and today we have the deep purple iPhone 14 Pro in a speed test comparison. Let's find out how much ahead the new 16 Pro is over the 14 Pro. So what is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology and let's begin this test with a boot up in three to go and see which one can get there first. Now we do have eight gigabytes of RAM. That's up over six gigs on the 14 Pro. So two gig improvement allows us to have access to Apple intelligence on 18.1 and newer. The iPhone also has an A18 chipset versus the A16 Bionic found in the iPhone 14 Pro. And unsurprisingly, the older iPhone 14 Pro did turn on a little bit slower. You'll see it's also a bit shorter and much thicker bezels. So that is a definite difference here between the phones, but the 14 Pro taking the win on the boot up so far. All right, so if we look at Face ID, which is gonna be on the lock screens there, they do unlock the same time. So I wish there would be like a touch ID or something and a Face ID option on the newer phones because it just feels like every year, same unlocking, same speed. There's just nothing new about the biometrics and not that we need it as mature. Also because the 14 Pro after the 13 Pro brought the promotion, retains that promotion, both of these scroll the same, they feel the same on the home screens. Even on iOS 18, the iPhone 14 Pro did not get slow, nothing like that. I mean, you wouldn't expect that just a couple years old. Um, so just kind of going through these phones, speed of the UI is identical. On both of them, there is literally zero difference. Confirming the software, we are on 18.0.1, still waiting on official 18.1, although you could get the 18.1 in beta right now. They're on like the sixth or seventh version already, but I'm gonna stick with the officials for the speed test. All right, when looking at the benchmarks, I did do a benchmark prior to the test on October 12th, as you can see right there, that's today. You'll probably see this tomorrow, which is October 13th. But you'll see right here, we did get about a thousand points better. Not exactly, but about a thousand on the single core. 3,000 better on the multi-core. So I do think when it comes to heavy, heavy use, I do think the 16 Pro is a sizable update over the 14 Pro. But even heavy, heavy use, the 14 Pro can still handle that. So is it noticeable? It's kind of like the same thing with the MacBooks. You know, they got the M2, the M3. The M3 is faster, but the M2 is still fine. Kind of feels like that here as well. I also ran a 3D mark because I want to show you the results here that we got on both of these so you can kind of get an idea of what to expect here. So if you take a look, you'll see the 16 Pro did 4590 versus 40, uh, 2457. Now we do have a six core GPU over here and a five core on the right. This also has a average frame rate of 27.5 FPS, and that's over 13 better than the 14.7 FPS on the right. So the 16 Pro gonna pull far ahead in gaming performance and thermals and will not dim the screen as much when doing heavier tasks of this sort. You can see the 16 Pro now scores better than 90% of devices on the market, where the 14 Pro scores better than 50% of devices on the market. Now, the fastest device I've seen over this is gonna be something like the M series uh, iPad. So there's not many more devices doing much better than the iPhone 16 Pro, you know, in the top level Android phones out there. Besides that is gonna be the M4 iPad. All right, so everything is closed out for both phones. Let's go ahead and begin this app test here. You'll see in an area as simple as calendar, zero difference. We hit clock, you can see exactly the same. We'll go to stopwatch, timers, and both of them have dynamic island. So it's not like you're getting an upgrade there if you go from the 14 Pro to 16 Pro. Let's hit calculator. And we'll hit AC, we'll do five, Minus five equals swipe out. Even the animation that was slightly faster to the left is identical. Let's go into news and we'll go to the today section. We'll go to following. We'll click iPhone on both and they can load this content exactly the same as well. So let's go to app store. So I'm not sure I'm looking at an upgrade here recommendation from the 14 Pro, not in the area of performance anyway. Let's go to games. Battery though, definitely. And let's go into Instagram. 
and you'll see Instagram loaded first, slightly on the right. We'll go here, click my pixel post, zoom in, everything looks the same. Swiping back, how about this iOS post? You can see performance about the same. Let's go into X, formerly known as Twitter, profile page, and similar results once again. So let's head into YouTube. And what we're gonna do is go over here, go into trending, scroll down, both of them scroll exactly the same. If we scroll over, got a little bit of turn action. Definitely scrolls about the same. And let's head over into Amazon here. And you can see, I think it was a 16 Pro. Wow. These feel like the same phones. Let's go to categories, at least in this area. They even kind of feel the same with the Dynamic Island. And we'll go to Best Buy. And I hope you're seeing too here that the size difference is not very different either. That was a 16 Pro. Even though it's a 6.3, I think a lot of people are thinking that they're getting a phone that is near like a max level, but with a smaller body. That's not really the case. You're getting still the more compact phone with the 16 Pro. It's just slightly bigger than the older ones. It still doesn't feel like a ginormous max phone though. Let's go into Jetpack Joyride. Although it is more comfortable and still a sizable enough screen, I think, for most people. You'll see over there. But it's definitely, you're definitely sacrificing battery and the better media experience along with more space for reading and media consumption on the smaller Pro. And you'll see, and I'll be doing a size comparison soon on the 16 Pro and Pro Max, giving you the in-depth analysis of what it's actually like using each size. So stay tuned. Let's, okay, so let's go ahead and head into Real Racing 3. And this requires just a little bit more power uh, to download and up and get into the game. So you'll see we were faster on the iPhone 16 Pro and then followed by the 14 Pro. Let's see if the same holds true for this game right here. And 16 Pro in the lead and to the home screen first. So I do think when we get into games, the 16 Pro's newer chip in any of the 16 series, that's even the base model, is going to outshine the 14 Pro. You'll see right here in Temple Run 2, it does look like we have another win, even on this casual game, to the iPhone 16 Pro. So if you play games regularly, it's probably a good update, especially if you play those ones that are demanding. Thermals are better. If chip is faster, more RAM, bigger screen, less bezel. It's a better experience. So 16 Pro wins there on the left. Let's go into PUBG Mobile, see what happens here. And I do have to say, though, that if I was going for gaming, I'm going for the 16 Pro Max, though, because it has a bigger screen, longer battery life. So it's going to be the better experience there. So it looked like we were already loaded on the left, but then I had to click guest. This one was going into the account already, but 16 Pro won that one as well. We'll go into speed test net. Faster again on the left. iMovie, faster again on the left. We'll go to Geekbench 6. That didn't load yet over here. That was taking too long anyway. Let's go into 3D Mark and maybe slightly faster on the left. So the iPhone 16 Pro won this test. They won most of the game row. It won some of those apps at the end. It, sh it just won them out. So in most of the base apps, no difference, zero difference actually. But when you start getting into some games and things that require a little bit more power, you have that extra juice to support that and a six core GPU for better sustained gaming. So that's really where it shines on the 16 Pro versus this older 6.1 inch 14 Pro. All right, so let's look at our other area of contention, which is going to be RAM management. Now, what I love about the 120 Hertz versions of these phones is that they definitely have some of the best smooth looking performance on any phones out there. So this is no difference here. I do like how we have eight gigs of RAM here versus the six on the 14 Pro. That would be an upgrade if you skipped 15 Pro. We'll go to news. I mean, eight gigs of RAM is what they put in a lot of MacBooks. So you're basically MacBook level performance nearly, not quite the M series chip is faster, but 
you know what I'm saying. Same RAM is like a MacBook, the same amount anyway. So let's go over here to the 14 Pro and you'll see that the 14 Pro also doing a fantastic job. I don't remember this ever reloading much of anything either, even with six gigs. Although there are phones out there now. And here we go, the reload Subway Surfers. I didn't remember this happening before. So that was a full reload, jetpack reloading. What the heck? You know, like, I don't remember this happening. Let's go to Best Buy. Oh, no. Are we on a full reload here? Six gigs of RAM? Oh, no. Groupon holding these base apps, though. YouTube, right where it was. X, right where it was. Instagram, similar. App Store relaunching. We'll go into weather. Slightly slower. Yeah, the 14 Pro lost it here. I also noticed the 14 Pro feels a lot toastier right now. Let's go ahead and check the temperature before they cool down. We'll check the iPhone 16 Pro. It had a little bit of time to cool down. But this one feels really hot right now. So that one was coming in right around 98.9. Look at that. I, I caught a 108 right there. I caught a 108 on the 14 Pro somewhere. Not 109.4. So this thing is toasting up. Also, I found this phone to auto dim the brightness a lot more than even the 15 Pro or a 16 Pro. So that's one annoying thing, but the 16 Pro won it out in RAM management for sure. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and now do a video export test. So I have the same videos here lined up. They're both three minutes and 38 seconds long, so let's render them. So we're gonna go ahead and save these videos, export both of these videos here, and we're gonna see which one can do this export quicker. Now, I've seen on my prior videos, sometimes the older phones have been exporting faster, uh, maybe because they're uh, been updated the iMovie but we'll see if the 16 Pro should take it I mean it should will it take it though that's what we're gonna see right here and the 16 Pro has won this test by a substantial margin so this is what I would expect and this is what actually occurred here when you do look for the actual performance gains they come in areas like this video exporting gaming as you've seen earlier, pulling ahead in the gaming department, even in the benchmarks, the 3D Mark, which tests the graphics more, pulled ahead there more. So these are the areas you gotta look for the performance gains. You've seen in the app tests and our basic rows, it didn't really do well, but this is a pretty decent upgrade so far for thinking about it here. We have an improved eight gigabytes of RAM that allows the phone to last longer, longer battery life, better cameras, we do have ourselves also better GPU performance. These are some good upgrades here. Even if a lot of people say, oh, it's the same phone. Not quite, as you can see right here. Definitely underneath the hood, it is not the same phone. The iPhone 16 Pro pulls ahead a pretty good margin. And this would actually add up if you use your phone for rendering daily, like you're not using a Mac, you're getting started on your YouTube career or your TikTok, whatever, you know, whatever you're doing, social media, Instagram, X, Facebook, you know, you know all the apps. If you start rendering out videos and you're doing this regularly, getting, getting things started with your phone only, that's all you got. The 16 Pro is gonna do better than the 14 Pro. Okay, so for a quick browsing test, let's go to Wikipedia. And you can see that was faster on the left. We'll click English. I think that was the right. You can see a little bit more space, but nothing drastic. I actually think you're trading a little bit less ergonomics for nearly the same exact content being displayed. So the 6.1 to me is actually more comfortable uh, to hold and doesn't really give you that much more content on the 6.3. So, I mean, the only reason you would want that is because you watch a lot of videos. So pretty similar though in browsing, you could see both multi-touch displays, no real issue. Both of them zoom amazingly well. Safari is great. The best browsers you could use on here because they're Apple design for their hardware. But yeah, browsing pretty similar on both. All right, so let's go ahead and launch the camera just to see which one could do this faster. And you'll see 14 Pro launching the camera quicker. We'll do it again, three, two, go. Look like the 14 Pro maybe again, I could be wrong. Let's hit camera. Yeah, 14 Pro. When going between the lenses, for some reason, look at the 14 Pro, go to the ultra wide. For some reason on the 16 Pro, it like bounces. You see it right there, bounce. Bounce, I don't know what that's about, because look how smooth it is here on the iPhone 14 Pro. So I don't know why it's doing that, that bounce right there, but that does not look smooth right there. Let me know if you know why it does that. But taking a quick photo, shutter speed about the same, no real differences there, 
when it comes to the camera shutter speed. So wrapping it up here, of course, you probably expected it. The winner is the iPhone 16 Pro. However, the iPhone 14 Pro is still a really rock solid phone. I think it's enough for most people, even for pro users, it's still enough. However, keep in mind though that the upgrades have to be looked at a little bit closer. They come in the way of the clock speed of the CPU, the RAM, the GPU, the slightly bigger battery life. You know, it's, it's the little things that count here. It's not really big, huge changes that count here. It's a polished upgrade, so that's what it is. If you're looking for radical changes, we all know this is not the year. You're gonna have to wait if you want radical changes to your phone, but if you really like the slightly larger screen, better battery life, better RAM, Apple intelligence support, all that stuff, you'll probably still like the upgrade here because they are giving a pretty good trade-in value and you don't have to trade it in. You can sell this for a good amount, the iPhone 14 Pro, and cop the 16 Pro for not much. So it could be a good deal or it could be a terrible deal. Depending on who you talk to, everybody's situation is different. If you found the video helpful, entertaining, and for me, click the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next episode. Nick here. Be sure to be well. And peace. Mm -hmm.